By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And it's Tuesday, so that means we're going to continue with Timmy's Brawl Fest. If you want to know more about what Brawl is and all the ins and outs of this old school format, check out the description below. And um, yeah, so this is the semi-finals. So we don't have any weak decks anymore. This is, uh, you know, mano against mano. This is some serious stuff. I'm hoping to find a few nice jewels in both of these decks, by the way, when I do the deck deck. But first, let's take a look at the commanders. So we're going to have Gideon, who's playing with Rubinia, Soul Singer, one blue, one white, one green, and two. And this summon legend can be tapped to gain control of target creature. It's a 2-3, by the way. And the commander of Xandor, a.k.a. David, is Tetsuo Umezawa. And Tetsumo Umezawa is one red, one black, and one blue. And you can tap it, pay a lot of mana, and uh, it kind of has a royal assassin effect. You can destroy target tap creature or target blocking creature. And the interesting thing of Tetsuo is it may not be the target of an enchant creature spell. So you cannot control magic it. And on top of that, it's also a 3-3. So Tetsuo, one of the stronger commanders, but also Rubinia, super annoying to play against, I can tell from experience. Um, anyway, these are the decks now before, or the commanders, I should say. Now, before I go into the deck deck, that's what I wanted to say. Um, I would first like to mention that you can also check out the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Game. So you can click on there and then you go straight to the action. I know some of you enjoy doing that, but you can also look at the specific deck deck chapters and choose what chapter you wanna see first. So maybe you only wanna see the deck of Gideon with Rubinia Soul Singer. You can do that. You can just click on the deck deck, watch that deck deck, and then, I don't know, pause the vid, click away, whatever you wanna do. It's, it's all up to you. So those timestamps are really easy. In general, you can just find a lot of information in the description. For example, we have a tournament website and there's a link to the website in the description below. And there you can find all the deck photos that I've collected from this Brawl tournament. We've had more than 40 people playing old school Brawl. So that's just, it's pretty amazing. Uh, and also you can read all about the rules that we've followed. Obviously, you know, Brawl has its standard rules, but we made a few changes to make it accommodate the old school scene. Okay, that's all I wanted to share with you for now in the introduction. That means we can, con can continue with the deck deck. And we're gonna start with the deck of Gideon. Let's take a look at his Rubinia Soul Singer Brew. And here you see the deck of Gideon. Now let's first zoom into that commander, Rubinia Soul Singer. So as you can see, it's five to cast, right? A green, a white, a blue, and two. And it's a two, three creature. And of course it has this amazing steel ability because you can tap it to gain control of target creature. And then it reads, Rubinia does not tap or untap this creature. If Rubinia becomes untapped, you lose control of this creature. You may choose not to untap Rubinia as normal during your untap phase. You, you also lose control of target creature if either Rubinia leaves play or you lose control of Rubinia. So somebody can actually control magic Rubinia because it's not protected, like for example, Tetsuo is. So that's quite interesting. And then if we look at the rest of the deck, we kind of see that steel theme, um, you know, coming back. Interestingly enough, um, he's not playing with control magic himself. Uh, probably because he already has enough steel effects that he feels like I don't really need it. He is playing with Old Man of the Sea, of course. Old Man of the Sea, a card from Arabian Nights, and you can use Old Man to steal the little creatures of your opponent. And he also has Preacher. Preacher is, I think, pretty good in this deck because Preacher can also steal, but the unique thing about Preacher is your opponent gets to choose. So you tap your Preacher, you steal something, and then your opponent can choose what they are going to give to you if he has multiple creatures out. But here's the catch. In the deck of um, uh, of Gideon, there are a lot of sack outlets. So we see Diamond Valley, but we also see uh, Ashnot's Altar. So you can sack creatures for, for mana. Really nice, by the way, to see that synergy between Ashnot's Altar, uh, Preacher, Rubinia, Old Man, and also, you know, cards like uh, Brain Geyser, for example. You know, imagine him stealing... Uh, you know, a creature, then sacking that creature to the altar using those two extra mana to draw two extra cards with a Brain Geyser. I mean, that is pretty good value. Then you're killing a creature of your opponent and you're drawing two cards extra. That would be kind of insane if we get to kind of, you know, see that action. What I also really like here is the Diamond Valley in combination with um, the uh, the Sylvan Library. Sylvan Library, an enchantment from Legends, one green and one. This is the fourth edition uh, version. And uh, with Sylvan Library, you get to look at the first 
three cards off your draw step and you can put them in any order and then you just draw your normal card but you can also draw up to two extra cards but per card you want to draw extra you've got to pay four life so i mean that's pretty steep right you can pay eight life to draw three cards eight life is a lot but when you've got like diamond valley you can just sack some creatures to gain some life and it gets even better if you've got Rubinia on the board or one of your, you know, preacher, old man. You can actually not sack your own creatures. You sack the creatures of your opponent. Now, that's really nasty. And again, getting extra cards in return. So I'm, I'm really liking, you know, the, the plans here that, uh, that Gideon has with this deck. And, and, and basically, what's around the deck are just a lot of really, really good cards. You know, we see the Blue Power. We see Icy Manipulator. We see Jam Day Tome. We see, you know, the white cards, the, the swords to plowshares, the balance. We see the regrowth. We see um, chaos orb. So it's just a lot of good cards in this deck combined with already those pretty good steel cards and having some of those tricks in there. So that is really good. This is looking like a really strong deck and I'm not surprised that it found its way to the semifinals. There are a lot of smaller creatures though. So for example, an Earthquake could be difficult to handle for Gideon and also uh, a Triskelion, he's playing a Trike himself, but I think also finding a Trike against him uh, could be difficult because, you know, an Argivian Archaeologist, which is also really good in, in this uh, deck, it's a 1-1, one -one. it's great to just get your Chaos Orb back and flip it over and over again, it'll get a lot of value. Um, but it's also kind of, you know, they're vulnerable, these, these little creatures, Sage of Latinam, same story, you know, they're, they're really vulnerable. So that, that is a bit of a catch, but overall really strong deck. I think Gideon's going to steal a ton and it must be super annoying to play against this deck. And now we're going to have a look at the deck of his opponent, Xander. What can he do with the Tetsuo Umezawa Brew? And here we see the deck of Xander, AKA David. So. David's got Tetsuo as his commander, so let's just first zoom into that. It's one blue, one black, one red for a 3-3 three, three summon legend. And it has a pretty good ability. You can pay a red, two black, and, and a blue, and then tap it, and destroy target tap creature or target blocking creature. And then it's got that extra ability that says you cannot enchant it. It may not be a target of an enchant creature spell. So for example, you cannot play a control magic on it. Now we just saw the deck of Gideon. Gideon is not playing with the control magic, so that's probably not going to be relevant in this matchup. Um, and it can still get stolen by the Rubinia Soul Singer, by the way, and the Preacher and all that. So that still counts. Um, looking at the rest of the deck, I actually see a lot of flyers here. So Sengir Vampire, Air Elemental, Mighty Sheevan Dragon, a lovely cool Rock of Courage. It's so cool to see you play with that. Phantasmal, um, uh, Phantasmal Monster, Phantom Monster, I should say, Phantom Monster. And uh, Azur Drake, we also see a um, Granite Gargoyle, fantastic flavor text. So a lot of flyers. And that, of course, goes really, really well with Earthquake. I briefly talked about Earthquake during Gideon's uh, deck deck. I think Earthquake can have a big influence on this match. Obviously, it's a big if and maybe because Brawl is a singleton format. So there's only one Earthquake in the deck of Xandor. But if he can draw into it, you know, then it's going to have a huge impact. You know, looking at the type of creatures that Gideon has, looking at the type of creatures that, you know, Xander has here in his deck. And also look at his other two ground creatures, that Setch Troll and Often Troll. Both of these creatures have regeneration, making them work really well with the Earthquake and also with the Nevenerals Disc. That's another card we find here in this deck. Um, what's also interesting is kind of the tap theme, right? Tetsuo kills tap creatures. So probably Xander thought, I'm gonna to try to put some cards in my deck that you know can tap creatures. And we see a Paralyze in the deck. Paralyze, I'm not always a big fan of it, especially when you cannot combine it with land destruction because Paralyze gets worse as the game takes longer, right? Paralyze, enchant creature, enchant a creature, creature gets tapped, and then the opponent has to pay four in the upkeep to untap the creature, right? So later in the game, you have more mana, so the four is easier to pay. But of course, a huge upside of this card is that it taps down the creature and that makes it work really well with Tetsuo. So there's a nice little, you know, synergy moment there in the deck. And I also like Icy Manipulator for the same reason. Although Icy, of course, is a, is a much stronger card than uh, Paralyzed. We also see Taunus' Coffin in here. Taunus' Coffin, it's quite interesting. Three and tap. Target, you can put target creature in the coffin, can also be your own, but can also be your opponent's creature. And what happens is that creature is considered to be out of the game, it's exiled. When you untap Tons' coffin, it comes 
back into the game, but it comes back into the game tapped. So that is quite interesting if you look at the Tetsuo again, because a tapped creature can be destroyed by the Tetsuo. Another nice thing about this, of course, is when the creature comes back tapped, it means your opponent doesn't have a blocker anymore, right? Because it comes back tapped, can't use it to block. Um, how does this work with Commander? Well, actually, when you put a Commander in the box, your opponent can choose to put that Commander back into the Command Zone. So that's an option that you have. Um, what else do we see in this deck? I just see a lot of strong cards. Makes sense, right? When you've made it uh, to the semifinals. You know, uh, a Mind Twist, Demonic Tutor. Those are kind of the cards you expect here. We don't see any blue power, which I kind of like because it kind of opens up the deck for some, uh, some more creative slots. Uh, we see a Brain Geyser, which is, of course, a no-brainer. We also see uh, a Fireball, a Disintegrate. They can just decide a game out of nowhere, right? It's always dangerous to play uh, against those cards. Direct Damage can just finish a game out of nowhere. So, yeah, overall, pretty strong card. Uh, I like the inclusion of Immolation, by the way. It gives uh, plus two, minus two. Very aggressive card that you can use both ways. You can, for example, make your Rock of Courage a 5-1 flyer, deal tons of damage. But you can also use it to, hey, kill a creature with it because it gives that minus two. So it's it's quite nice. It's also pretty good to kill regeneration creatures, by the way. Okay, so uh, this is the deck of Xander. We looked at the deck of Gideon. So that means we're ready for the match. Let's go. Game number one. Here we go. So Xander is sitting on the left with Tetsuo. On the right, we see Gideon with Rubinia Soulsinger. I believe it's Gideon on the play here. It looks like he's deciding... Okay, he's taking a mulligan here, putting a card on the bottom. So he's starting with six instead of seven. And oh, look, Xander goes Soul Ring turn one. That's what you want to do here in the semifinals. Looks like Gideon's um, screen froze here for a second. Let's hope he comes back. We see Xander here casting Granite Gargoyle. So he's got a pretty good start. And Gideon's back. Okay, he's... Drawn a strip mine, taking care of the mountain and passing turn. Two blue open. Maybe he's got his boomerang or better, a counter spell in hand. First, we see an attack here by Xander. Gideon dropping to 18. And there is another creature. Lots of pressure here. The often troll. No counters from Gideon. So it looks like he's going to take four damage unless he can actually put something on the board here. Finding a green mana and passing turn. So this is really a slow start for Gideon or a quick start for Xander. It depends on how you look at it. There's an attack for four. Gideon going to drop to 14. Oh, it looks like he's already down to 15. Not quite sure. I believe he should be... Oh, he's going down to... Yeah, 14, right? Okay, I was like, has he going to nine? No, he's, he's on 14. It's going quick, but not that quick, Gideon. Finding another island. So four lands... And he needs white mana, I guess. White gives him access to Swords to Plowshares, but also to Balance. And Balance would be just a great way to kill those creatures. There are even more creatures on the side of Xander playing a Setch Troll. Remember, that Troll is still a 2-2 because Xander doesn't have black mana. So at least that's something. And Gideon here playing a Maze of If. So that'll help him to kind of stop the bleeding a little bit. But he's on 10. Xander's going to attack with everything here. Probably see a Maze activation. That means he's going to drop to six. So the Setch is being sent back. Makes sense because that's the only creature he cannot regenerate. Also doesn't have flying. So that's the best choice. What can Gideon do? Are we going to see a boomerang in the end step of Xander? Yes, we're going to see a boomerang. And he's going to play a boomerang on the Setch troll and he's going to untap. So at least it means he only takes two damage there. Found a Diamond Valley. If he can just play out... Maybe Old Man of the Sea would be really good right now because then he can steal one of the creatures of Xander, feed it to his Diamond Valley and gain some life as well. Unfortunately for him, he's not finding it. He's mazing the Gargoyle here. Yeah, mazing the Gargoyle, taking two damage, going to four. Ooh, a swamp to make matters worse. This is interesting. I would have expected Xander here. Ooh, there's a counter spell. I would have expected Xander here to use his Soul Ring, actually. Oh, he's got other plans. Oh, Psionic Blast. And what a good order here from Xander. First playing the Setch Troll to kind of lure out that counter spell. I mean, Gideon, you had no chance. You were so far behind. You were already behind. You started with six. You're already a card behind without even, you know, really taking turn one. So... There was not a moment in this game that, that Gideon really had a chance. Perhaps if he would have drawn into white mana balance or perhaps that old man of the sea, 
but didn't happen. One up for Xander. We're going to let these players shuffle and we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. Gideon again on the play. Look at that opening. Mox Pearl, City of Brass, taking damage. Sage of Latinam, 1-2 creature from the Antiquities expansion. You can tap and sack an artifact to draw a card. So maybe somewhere in this game he's going to sack that pearl. That could be an option. And there we see Xander starting with a basic mountain. So in game one, we saw Xander starting off really, really quickly and well with that soul ring. And in this game, it looks like the tables have turned. But look at this, Xander finding a swamp and casting a Chaos Orb, there is a disenchant and step by Gideon. So Gideon having the answers right now, attacking again. Now he's casting Rubinia Soul Singer? No, it's five, of course, Rubinia. Sorry, he can't. Now he's casting a Jam Day Tome instead. It's looking really good for Gideon. Perhaps he would have preferred to have a creature to put some more pressure on, but this is really good as well. And there we see that Granite Gargoyle again. And I think the big difference here is that this time Gideon has access to all his mana. There's a maze of if. Are we going to see a Swords? No, we're not going to see a Swords. Mana Vault instead. Sarah Angel. And he can actually sack the Mana Vault with his Sage to draw a card. This is a perfect start for Gideon. His hand is empty, but what a hand it has been. Wow. Let's take a look what Xander can do against this. And I actually wonder if Gideon wants to sack the Mana Vault now main phase. He does not. Passing turn here to Xander. Xander finding a Swamp. And there is his Mana Vault. And he, of course, is looking for blue mana to potentially cast a Tetsuo Umezawa. Tapping five here. There's a Fireball on the Sarah Angel. Wow, Sarah's gone. And uh, no, he's not gaining any life. It's a Fireball, unfortunately. And there we see that sack of the Mana Vault. He's going to dig for a card and then take his turn. Doing that on the end step. There is an island. So he can cast, exactly, casting Rubinia Soul Singer. So Rubinia Soul Singer, remember, he can tap it to steal a creature of Xander. Xander, of course, having that um, Granite Gargoyle there. So that's really open to be stolen. And Xander taking damage from his own Mana Vault. Playing another mountain. Cannot find a blue source here. I wonder what he's going to do next. I mean, if he's got a Lightning Bolt or Chain Lightning, he can take care of the Rubinia Soul Singer. It's got three toughness. We'll just have to see. And he's passing turn. Things are not looking good here for Xandor. So now he's stealing the Granite Gargoyle. Of course, it does have then Summoning Sickness again. So he cannot attack with it, but he can attack with his Sage. And what kind of size cards, I believe. I see a Chaos Orb there. I'm not quite sure. He's not attacking. Interesting. He wants to keep his Sage untapped to kind of respond if perhaps Xander is going to destroy that uh, Jam Day Tome. Then he can draw a card. There we see a Volcanic Island. And, oh, an Ancestral Recall. And maybe you're wondering why Xander is not casting his Commander. That's, of course, because of the Rubinia Soul Singer. So, is there going to be a response from Xander here on that Ancestral Recall? Let's see what Xander is going to do. And I mean, I, I, I think this, this, this is all, already in the back for getting here after this Ancestral Recall. I mean, it's looking so good for him. There we see a Side Blast on the Rubinia Soul Singer. So Rubinia Soul Singer goes back to the command zone. That does mean that Xander is going to get his Granite Gargoyle back. And now Gideon is going to draw his three cards. And if Xander now wants to, or sorry, Gideon wants to recast his Rubinia Soul Singer, he has to pay two extra. So he now has to pay seven in total. And he doesn't have that yet. He has six mana to his disposal. But I'm sure that seventh mana will come eventually. Because he's got a lot of card draw, just draw, drew three more cards with Ancestral Recall. There we see that Chaos Orb. And what else is he going to do? Tapping three more. Oh, this is so painful for Xandor. Because this is our Givian Archaeologist with Chaos Orb on the board. This is a great combination here for Gideon. What he can do now is he can use this Chaos Orb in the end step of Xander, destroy something on his side of the board. Then he can pay two and tap his Archaeologist to get... The Chaos Orb back from the graveyard. So this is a big problem. Of course, Xander is going to attack. But yeah, Gideon has that maze. So what can he do now? Is he just going to cast a Tetsuo? Yeah, he's got to do something. 
So at least he finds a Tetsuo. I'm expecting a flip from Gideon here on the Tetsuo. There we see a often troll. So now Xander thinks, you know what? I just have to go all the way. Taking a damage, he's probably going to flip here on that Tetsuo. And that is a hit. So Tetsuo goes back with a counter on it. So it's now five to recast. And I'm expecting Gideon here to use his Archaeologist and play out his Chaos Orb again. If he does not, it means he even has a better option, which is even worse for Xander here. But he's doing exactly what I thought, playing out that Chaos Orb. And he can just keep flipping, you know, on the commander of Xander. So basically, for Xander, the commander is not really useful anymore. That is a big problem. So he's actually going to flip straight away very aggressively with the Chaos Orb. And uh, he's going to hit the Granite Gargoyle. So 2-2 two -two Flyer is gone. Then he's going to pass turn. Another damage here for Xander. Going to go to 12. I mean, his Mana Vault is really hurting him. And there he pays 5. So I'm expecting the Commander to come back here. Yeah, there we see the Commander coming back onto the battlefield. Kind of forcing Gideon to use that Chaos Orb against... Oh, interesting. Paralyze. I like this play. Paralyze on the Archaeologist. That means that Gideon has to pay 4 to untap it, then pay 2 to get his Chaos Orb back. And that means that he doesn't have enough mana to also play out the Chaos Orb and use it. This is really interesting. Wow, so he is going to untap it. Ooh, this could be a problem for Gideon here. Remember, if he cannot take care of the uh, Tetsuo now, then Tetsuo... You know, he, Tetsuo no longer has summoning sickness and Xander can start using it to kill some creatures. Very interesting. And now he's going to pay the four to untap the Mana Vault. And there we see a Divine <laughs> Offering. Ah, that's so mean, Gideon. Just when Xander invested those four mana, he we see a strip mine. Interesting. Is he going to... Yeah, he's going to strip the Maze of If. And it's really nice. Kind of in a weird way, Xander found his way back into this match. And now he's attacking with both. This is kind of surprising for me. Because then he's allowing a little opener. So he's activating the Mishra's Factory. He doesn't have Summoning Sickness anymore. I think Sander probably forgot about that. And that means he can block on a Tetsuo. He can trade. And this is looking pretty good for Gideon again. I, I think I wouldn't have attacked if I was... Xander in this case, but it's always easy from my position looking at looking at it back as a commentator, of course. And now we see Gideon using the archaeologist, getting back the Chaos Orb, probably going to play it out, and he's just going to keep it on the field, I guess. He's probably learned his lesson from the Paralyzed play. Oh, oh man. Oh, man. Copy artifact on the Chaos Orb. That is really good. That is really, really good. And there we see him eating away that Mox Pearl. I already thought when he played that out early in the game, I thought there's going to be a moment where he's going to cash in on that Pearl for a card. That moment just came. So he's got a couple of cards in hand and he's deciding not to use the Chaos Orbs, taking two damage. going to go to 11. And I believe Xander now has to pay seven for Tetsuo. He's got the mana, so why not play it out? I believe he has no cards in hand. Maybe one card. I wonder what he's going to do. He's got one card in hand, so that could be reason enough not to play out the Tetsuo again. Perhaps it's an instant. For example, a Shatter in response to a Chaos Orb activation. Again, an Earthquake would be really nice right now, Xander. I talked about Earthquake a lot in the introduction, and we're not seeing it. Okay, there's a Terror on the Archaeologist, I assume. Exactly. Does take away his own Paralyze with that, but uh, it's a very good decision because Archaeologist and Chaos Orb on the board, I mean, you know you're not going to win with that. So at least this is a start for Xandor. And maybe he can find a way back into this like he did before. Let's see what Gideon can do here. Two cards in hand. The problem for Gideon here is he needs something on the board, something beefy, or his commander. That's also fine. Rubinia's Soul Singer. That means he can steal that Setch Troll next turn. He's probably just going to pass turn now and perhaps even take two extra damage because he doesn't want to kill the often troll. There we see Xander drawing his card. I'm, is he going to attack? I'm kind of expecting him to. Is he going to recast his commander? 
Probably not. Okay, there we see a shatter on the book. So there is the attack with the Satch Troll. And he's actually blocking it. I'm a little bit, well, not surprised. I guess I guess you don't want to go down too low because you know your opponent's playing red. So before you know it, you get killed by a huge fireball. So I guess this is a good decision. And he can now attack for three anyway. So it's all good. There plays a soul ring. And what else is he going to do here? Aligning those four mana, playing six, brain Kaiser. <laughs> Gideon is finding everything that he wants to find in this second game. I mean, you know, Ancestral Recall, Chaos Orb, Archaeologist, Brain Geyser. Yeah, he's... Um, I'm actually surprised Xander's still alive at this point. He is on nine, so he's got... He's on a three-turn clock, I guess. Getting attacked again, so Xander is on six. Old Man of the Sea making matters even worse. And Xander is really playing on borrowed time here. He's got one more turn, I guess. One card in hand and one more turn to go before he's dead. There we see an attack for five. Old Man of the Sea also a 2-3. So he's going to go to one. Psionic Blast. Okay, we saw a Psy Blast in game one. We see it in game two, but this time played by the other player. And Gideon is making it a 1-1. One -one. That means we're going to get ready for game number three. Who's going to make it to the finals of Timmy's? Roll fast. The deciding game, game number three. Who's going to make it to the finals of the Brawl Fest, Timmy's Brawl Fest? Remember, we started with 40 plus players or something, so it was pretty big. Good start by Gideon here with that Mox Emerald. And Xander also finding a way to ramp with a Felber Stone. Looks like he wants to. Okay, I thought he wanted to tap it, but he did not. Just wanted to replace it. There we see a City of Brass making that Felber Stone really good. By the way, it can now make any type of mana. Ooh, Black Lotus on the side of Gideon. Is he gonna cast something? Sa oh, I want to say Sarah Angel, but there's a Triskelion. Four-four creature. Turn number two. Things are looking really up for uh, for Gideon here, and I wonder if Xander now is gonna play out his Tetsuo. He could do that, you know, and obviously the Tetsuo can get killed by the trike, but maybe he wants that because then those plus one plus one counters are off the trike. So I wonder what he's going to do. Looks like he's a little bit in the tank here. Probably thinking about the same thing, you know, do I want to play the Tetsuo? Let's see what he's going to do. He's tapping a black, no, okay, tapping the Felwer Stone for any color mana. And okay, he is tapping a black, playing a weakness. So that's minus two, minus one on the Triskelion. So it's no longer a 4-4. Four, four. It is now a 2-3. And then he's playing the Tetsuo. Interesting. So if Gideon is now using the counters of the trike, he's killing his own Triskelion. But I think that's worth a trade, to be honest. So it looks like he's trading at the moment. Yeah, so there goes the Tetsuo back to the command zone. So it's dead now. So that means that next turn that Xander wants to play it out, he's got to pay two extra. It looks like the screen is frozen, by the way. So I did a little bit of cutting in between exactly. Now we're back at least where we see Gideon. And as you can see, he's played out an old man of the sea. So a card from Arabian Nights 2-3 that he can tap to then take control of a creature with same power or less of Xandor. And there, Xander's back as well. Okay, and then we can continue this match. Come on, guys. Game number three. Let's see who makes it into this final. Looks like there are some technical issues, but Gideon, we can see you now. You're back. And he's going to untap. Let's see what he can do here. So, Old Man of the Sea. Remember that Tetsuo went... Okay, there we see Chain Lightning taking care of that problem. What I wanted to say is remember Tetsuo went to the command zone, so he now has to pay five if he wants to recast. Four cards in hand, passing turn. Ooh, Time Walk by Gideon. Not too impactful, but still helps him to find a land. Can he do something with the four mana? He can. <laughs> There's a Juggernaut. Wow. Is there an answer? Okay, there's a Psy Blast. Okay, that's that's at least there's an answer from Xander. That's really important, of course. Doesn't mean he's going to drop to 18. And let's see what else he can do. Untapping, going through his hand. And, ooh, playing Tonis' Coffin. 
Talked a little bit about this card in the introduction. It can work really well with Tetsuo Umezawa because when you put something in the coffin, you can then untap it. And when the creature comes back into play, it's actually tapped. And when you've got Tetsuo on the battlefield, it means you can kill that creature. So it's kind of a way to kill something. There we see a preacher on the side of Gideon. So I'm expecting Sander to maybe now not do anything. And then on the end step of Gideon, put the preacher in the coffin. So he's got five mana right now. Two mountains, mountains, an island, a swamp, and a flower stone. Let's see what he's gonna what he's going to do. Tapping five. Oh, he's gonna recast it. Whoa! That is interesting. Although it doesn't really matter that much because then Gideon can steal it, but then next turn Xander can get it back by using the coffin. So that's probably his reasoning. Interesting. Looks like Gideon is going to look something up. Probably Thomas's coffin. How does that card work again? Well, it's a big problem, Gideon. Try to get rid of it. That's my advice. We saw, of course, that Divine Offering in game. What game was that? Oh, we see a copy artifact on the Thomas' coffin. That is really interesting. And then he's going to put the Tetsuo in there. Interestingly, so now Xander can choose if he wants to put it back into the command zone, but he chooses not to, and that kind of makes sense. And there we see an attack by the Preacher, so Xander's going to drop to 17. Wow, this is going to be a complex game with two of those Thomas' coffins out. And there we see a Chaos Orb. So I'm expecting him to flip here on the coffin. And there he goes. Okay, it's a hit. It's a bit of a sloppy one, but it's a hit, so it counts. And that means that Tetsuo comes back tapped. And then next turn, Gideon can, of course, steal the Tetsuo. And now Gideon has that Tonsis coffin problem again, where he has to try to destroy it. Doesn't play with steel artifact, so he cannot steal it. Or he played out his copy artifact, so I guess just destroying it is the best way to go for Gideon. But of course, he has to have the right creatures to be able to do that. And remember, if Xander has Tetsuo and Tons' coffin, it's kind of like a killing machine. It does take a lot of mana, though. <laughs> I mean, four to activate Tetsuo and uh, three to activate coffin, but still, it's super annoying. And there we see Rubinia Soul Singer. Oh man, this is a complex board state. Xander's probably gonna use his coffin, perhaps on the preacher. That means he gets his Tetsuo back. Ooh, there's a terror. This terror is really, really important. Interestingly enough, he's choosing to shoot the Rubinia back to the command zone. Maybe I would have taken the preacher because. Every time you put the Rubinia in the box, you know, Gideon gets to choose if he wants to put it in the command zone or not. So maybe that would have been, although I'm, I'm not sure. Okay, there we see Sengir Vampire. Interesting. Of course, Xander doesn't have to use his, um, his Tons' coffin yet. He can just say, you know what, you just go and untap and I'll, I'll see whatever you're going to do. Because remember, Gideon doesn't have access to the mana to actually activate that Tetsuo. So for him, it is just a 3-3 vanilla. Finding a Mishra's Factory, casting a Mana Vault with it. Tapping 4 and the Mana Vault. Oh, and she's back. But now, of course, Xander can untap and use the Tonus' Coffin. I would attack. Yeah, I think this is a good decision. I'm expecting Xander to maybe take the damage. Yeah, he's going to take the damage. He's going to go to 14. The thing is, if he blocks, then next turn Gideon can untap the Preacher, and that's going to be a problem. So what is he going to do now? I'm expecting him to use the Coffin, attacking first with the 4-4. Four -four. That's probably a good move. So we see Gideon going to 10. And of course, Xander can just wait with the coffin. He can do it in response to whatever Gideon wants to do with the Rubinia Soul Singer. He can also do it in the end step of Gideon. So I guess this makes sense that Xander is waiting. And I'm expecting Gideon just to be very, very aggressive next turn, maybe even animating the factory, attacking with that as well. Xander on 14 right now, Gideon on 10. Ooh, he is going to use the coffin. 
So putting her in the coffin. So both commanders are, are like on the other side of the tables, I guess, with the big difference that Rubinia Solsinger is being held captive in Thomas's coffin. And there we see an untap of the mana vault. He can, he can still attack for five though. Which is not too bad. Taking a damage. Dropping to nine. Swords to plowshares. That's pretty good. Does mean four life though for Xander. Gonna go up to 18, but he's gonna lose three straight away. Gonna drop to 15. And it's looking pretty good right now for Gideon. There we see an untap with the Tonsus Coffin. Remember, the creature comes back tapped. And of course, after the untap, he can use Tonsus Coffin to steal, to put the preacher in the coffin, I mean. Ah, but then again, then Gideon has the Rubinia Soul Singer and he can steal Tetsuo, so that's not ideal. Three cards in hand for Xander, by the way. I'm sure he's in the tank like me, trying to find a way out of this. Very interesting game number three, by the way. Lots of different options for both players. This is really everybody's game still. There's a demonic tutor, of course, making things even more difficult. What is Xander going to look up? Maybe just some creature removal here? Earthquake would be nice, by the way. Earthquake for... He could do an Earthquake for three. He would also kill his own commander, yes. But he would kill two birds with one stone. What else would be interesting? I'm trying to think about his deck right now. A Trike could be interesting. Oh, he doesn't play with Triskelion, I believe. I don't think I saw it in his deck. Because Triskelion and Tons' Coffin works together really well. And of course, it also works great against the Preacher and uh, also against the Soul Singer. And he's using Thomas' coffin to put Rubinia's Soul Singer back into the coffin. And there we see a Lightning Bolt. That does the job. Lightning Bolt on Preacher. That means he gets a Tetsuo back. And of course, he does it after the untap step of Gideon. That is some good magic. So maybe he just looked up the, the Lightning Bolt because Lightning Bolt does a lot of work here. And it allowed Xander to use the coffin and the bolt all in, well, you could say the same turn. And there we see Sage of Latinam and a GM Day Tome. So pretty good cards, but the problems here remain. And now he's untapping. And he can start using his Tetsuo to kill the Rubinia Soul Singer here. He's got two black because that Felwer Stone, uh, because of the City of Brass on the side of Gideon, so he can use his Felwer Stone to make black. I think he's gonna do it. He's putting the mana separate. I think he's gonna use Tetsuo here to kill Rubinia Soul Singer. Exactly, so he's gonna kill Rubinia Soul Singer. He's gonna go to two, he's gonna go back into the command zone. He's gonna use, and he's gonna put the Sage in the box. And he's gonna pass turn. He doesn't wanna give Gideon the opportunity to use the Sage to sack that Mana Vault next turn and draw a card. I think that's a very good decision because every card can make a huge impact on this game. Remember, if Thomas's Coffin is gone, that will change the uh, the situation dramatically. There we see an untap by Gideon. He's on nine, by the way. And it's also gonna be a little bit difficult for Xander, I guess, to attack. I, I'm What I'm expecting him to do next turn, obviously depending on what he has in hand, but. Let's say there's nothing in hand that's interesting enough to play. Is untap Astonis' coffin. Sage comes back tapped. He's going to kill it again with the Tetsuo past turn. Let's first maybe see what Gideon's going to do. Just going to draw a card here with the extra mana from the Soul Ring. Looks like he's just going to pass turn. And is he going to untap the coffin? He is not. I kind of expected him to untap the coffin. Does that mean that he's got something in hand? that he wants to do something better. Oh, this is something better, copy artifact. Is he gonna do it on the coffin? I think he is. There we see an attack. So right now, if Gideon activates his Mistress Factory, that's what he does. He's now gonna use his copied version of the coffin to put the Mistress Factory into the coffin. So it's also out of the game. Wow, 
it is really a Tansis coffin game, this game number three. And it's looking really good for Xandor. Tapping three here. There's a wall of air. Okay, at least I can stop it a little bit. And now I do wonder if Xander's gonna bring that Sage back, kill it. Yes, he's gonna untap it. Look at that. He's got the Tansis Coffin Tetsuo combo going. And he's gonna put the wall of air in the box and he's gonna attack. I'm a little bit surprised here. Fireball, I'm not surprised at all because he had the fireball <laughs> to finish the job. I, I, I was surprised why if he didn't have the fireball, I would really go for killing the Sage because you don't want to give Gideon the chance to dig further in his deck. But, um, you know, obviously Xander had fireball in hand, which we couldn't see. And then it makes way more sense to attack, finish him with the fireball. What an interesting, interesting game number three. Thank you very much. Xander and Gideon for this great, great match. And congratulations, of course, to Xander for moving on to the finals of the Brawl Tournament right here on Timmy Talks. And if you want to see those finals, get uh, check back with us next week, Tuesday. For now, thank you very much for watching. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and ringing that bell. And of course, welcome to Timmy Talks. And if you've been here before, you can also help very simply by leaving a like a thumbs up that really helps the channel grow leaving a comment and sharing this on your socials another thing that you can do is you can become a sponsor of the show so if you like my content if you want to help me grow the channel you can become a patron on patreon and that already starts with one dollar a month and one of the cool things is when you support me for that one dollar a month you get access to the discord server you get um access to well you can talk to me wow amazing um, but seriously, I mean, if, if you want to have a chat about old school, it's all possible. Um, and last but not least, your name will be mentioned in the end scroll of every single video. Really? Yes, really. What does that look like? You know what? I'm just going to show you. Let's go to the end scroll and let's take a look at the fantastic, amazing, wonderful channel members and patrons of Timmy Talks. Here we go. Ich kann das Fickete Sommer gesehen.